All right, hello and welcome back to another one of my Guild Wars 2 video guides. Particular on this one, I want to talk about the Guild Wars 2 trait system that they use for the game, and I want to talk about some of the overall stats and what exactly those stats mean within this particular. video tutorial. Alright, in Guild Wars 2, a character is defined by their particular traits. These traits are similar to other games, uh, skill trees or uh, ability trees or branches, kind of like, um, what's a good game? Or a game people can like kind of familiarize. I guess, uh, I can't really think of one. Well, I can't kind of think of one. If, I'm not sure how many have played the old, like, PlayStation 2 game called Champions Return to Arms. Champions. But if, if you play that game, it's kind of like the little skill branch trees where your character has three branches and they can go deeper into each branch to get different abilities. It's very similar to that. The way it works, you get a total of 70 points at level 80. My char right now is currently level 17, but I'm in structured PvP, a uh, player versus player, player uh, lobby zone that you can go to by hitting the dual swords icon in the corner. It will say go to the miss and so on and so forth. But here you're able, you're automatically leveled to 80 and have full access to all your skill, your unspent trait points that lets you customize your build. Now every class has five different branches they can spread their points out to. The topmost branch or the first branch governs power and condition duration. The second branch will govern depending on the uh, particular class precision and a secondary stat for deep critical strikes governs precision and critical damage and shadow arts the third tree will always govern primary toughness and a secondary stat for thief and shadow arts that secondary that is healing power and acrobats the fourth tree will always govern vitality and a second stat for thief acrobats it's boon duration and the fifth tree is always going to be your class's uh, primary or class mechanic kind of tree it will usually have something to do with your class as a mechanic for a thief that mechanic is steel so trickery often deals with the classes or the thief stealing abilities and it governs condition damage and it governs steel recharge rate so it, the more points you have into this tree the faster steel comes off cooldown thief has an initial 45 second cooldown to begin with so if you fully trade it to 30 it's minus 30% off that 45% cooldown now the thing that's really neat about the Guild Wars 2 skill systems is that for the points you allot into it, like if you put 10 points into into uh, any of the things, you have usually six different abilities or yeah, yeah, six different traits that function that have diff six different functions. So if you put 10 into Deadly Arts, you would have access to six different abilities or modifications to your character. You could have 50% more damage while down. You could have traps apply, five stacks of vulnerability. You could have 
40% chance to cause vulnerability for five seconds on critical hits and so on and what this allows you to do is that even though two characters have the same same uh, trait point spread doesn't always mean they'll play exactly the same they could be using different traits at the same time which alters the way you'll play your character or further defines your character your character now every every branch is divided into three tires you have adapt which is 10 points into a uh, trait line you have master which is 20 points into a trait line and you have grand master which is a maximum of 30 points and will give you access to all the traits within that branch at a maximum of 30 that you can swap out and the traits 11 and 12 will always be linked to the Grand Master because they're considered the best or deadliest of any particular bats. And then Master will always govern 8 through 10 on traits. Now on top of the traits that are customizable that you can freely pick from your own, you're also going to get some freebies. And these freebies are 5, 15, and 25. Those are going to be the freebies that you get for no investment or, all, or for investing into the tree, but they, it was what they give you. They're not changeable by any fashion or manner and usually have something to do with the particular tree they're in. Deadly Arch, which is the Thief's Power Tree. So you have things like Serpent's Touch, which steals apply 10 seconds of poison. Lotus, Lotus is poison, weakening a target for 3 seconds whenever you poison them. So this automatically goes into that. They have, they share a uh, common bond or similarity. Because when you poison, Poison now inflicts weakness, and at the 25, still 10% more damage to the target when it has a condition. So we know that when we steal from them, they're going to have a condition, and when we steal from them, they're going to have two conditions, poison and weakness. And due to that fact, you're going to inflict 10% more damage by whatever means that you're using. And also, the 25 trait in every tree is meant to for always increase your damage in some some method so even if you go like say a tanky character or a, a really like high survival ability low damage character they have given you a, a built-in way of dealing a reasonable moderate to reasonable damage by some method so if I want to go like full toughness fatality kind of like tanky thief and go like 25 into both of those I would get hidden, hidden assassin from toughness, which gives me might for 15 seconds. So whenever you go into stealth, and might is a positive boon that increases your damage per stack. And fluid strikes it says increases my damage by 10% when my endurance is not full. So when your yellow bar is empty, you get 10% uh, flat damage increase. So 25 in the trait build or trait system that particular perk will always have something to do with increasing your damage so just because you want to build a like a super tanky character it doesn't mean that you won't be able to deal reliable damage because in the game of guild wars 2 everybody is uh encouraged to be able to do damage in some method or form regardless of the way they want to play or their play style now a little bit, I'm going to go back to the traits, but I want to talk a little bit about the the uh, the attributes, the stat attributes that your character, that will def define your character. Power increases attack. And attack is determined by 
the amount of power you have and your weapons damage. So basically this is your offensive stat. It determines your your base damage versus say a target's armor. And the best way to increase your damage flat out is to gain more power because that just directly increases your overall DPS or damage per second. Your second offensive trait would be precision. Precision governs critical chance. So the higher your precision, the more critical chance you will have. And critical chance is is basically uh, a chance for you to deal uh, more damage depending on your uh, critical damage, which is the multiplier of your critical hit. Critical hit is double damage, but critical damage multiplies or increases that amount of double damage you can deal to a target. Now, you have two defensive attributes, toughness, which is half of what governs a character's armor or how durable or tanky they are. So your toughness increases your armor and armor is determined by your item's defenses, which is the green letter next to defense and your toughness. So those two combined give you your armor rating, which is how well you can withstand physical damage from foes and uh, enemies alike. So if you want to be like a really survivable character or a really tanky character, your toughness is one of the attributes you're going to want to really invest in. Fatality. Fatality is a direct reflection of your maximum health, your maximum HP. For a thief, your HP maximum is, is rather low by default. So it kind of makes you a little bit squishy for the profession, but that was due to uh, balance out their ability to stealth or go invisible. So if you're having like troubles like surviving, mostly condition damage is is the main reason to have a good set amount of vitality because this condition damage is not negated by any any way at all by your armor. So if you're really really tough or really really squishy, condition damage is going to deal the same amount of set damage to you regardless of either of those. Alright, condition damage. Condition damage is your third offensive offensive stat and it governs condition damage. Things such as bleeds, bleeds, poisons, and things of that nature. Non-physical damage or upfront damage is governed by condition damage. So the higher condition damage, the more damage you're going to do with uh, dots or damage over time abilities. Boon duration increases the uh, duration of your applied boons to you or allies. So if you have a build or want to build a character that does a lot with boons such as like a guardian per se, that's something you want to invest into is the boon duration so that it increases the boons so that your performance is improved over a longer duration of time because boons are basically uh, performance boosters in this game. Next you have critical damage which I touched on. Uh, agony resistance is a whole nother uh, attribute for something else completely related uh, which is Fischl's of the Mist and I'll probably do a video on that later on but for now that's a stat that we're not going to worry about. Um, your health which is determined by your vitality so those two are intertwined. This is the flat number of it. This is the uh, the vitality number, but this is the end result of it. So the more that is, the higher this is going to be. Then you have condition duration, which goes hand in hand with condition damage. Basically, condition duration, just like boon duration, is uh, the increase to durations of your uh, dot abilities or damage over time abilities. Next is healing power. Healing power affects all incoming and outgoing heals so your number six it's it has a base heal but 
the base heal is further improved by having higher healing power by having higher healing power and also your ability to semi heal your allies is also increased when you have higher 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 healing power Guild Wars 2 was a game that was uh, advertised or on the idea of not having somebody basically in traditional MMOs like power heal you like say a, a dedicated healer they wanted each and every profession to have its own uh, reliable ability to heal itself and receive supplement healing from maybe your teammates or uh, or allies so basically your outgoing heals are supplementing that person's primary here that could be on cooldown or on recharge for some reason but the best the best heal that you're gonna get is not gonna come from teammates or allies it's gonna come from your number six that is the biggest heal you can possibly receive all at once anyway so by having higher healing power right now shadow refuge heals for 5240 at level 80 with zero healing power if we went down into our healing power tree which is shadow arts we went to 30 and then went back and looked at that which have 300 healing power and as you see it went up by 300 points so instead of 5240 heals for 5540 so that's the reflection of healing power to your heals it also affects the regeneration boon and like I said outgoing uh, party heals all right now back to the trait system now what I really like about the trait system is it allows you to define your character and whatever particular play style you wanted to or could possibly imagine it's really flexible depending on how many points you invest or trait points you invest into a line it lets you customize your character to do whatever you plan for it to do or whatever you specify you want it to do but also some things I want to stress to like new character new players and some play experienced players is that just because you put a a trait in those boxes those three boxes it doesn't mean that it has to be there all the time like it's like it's uh, set in stone because nothing in Guild Wars 2 is set in stone it's a very customizable game um, they want you to swap out your traits to meet the current situation so if we went 30 into deadly arts and took backfighting and improvision and panic and strike say that we didn't really get downed a lot so our backfight trait 80% damage while downed is not really being used and we could swap it out for say uh, potent poison so now whenever we stick we know we're gonna steal because it's our class mechanic and when we do we poison but now we chop swap to a trait that was more that's gonna have a bigger impact in our playstyle or our build because it's gonna increase our poison duration by 33%. So basically the point I'm trying to stress is to keep your traits open. Don't don't keep them locked into a certain thing that's not being overly used a lot. Because one, one of the strongest, strongest and most promising aspects of Guild Wars 2's trait system is its flexibility. It allows you to be flexible whenever you're not in combat. So I've already went over some of the well I've already went over the attributes stat attributes of Guild Wars 2 and each one is going to be tied to one of the five trees. Now the top one, power, precision, toughness, vitality, class mechanic, are always going to be tied in that order. So it will be power, precision, toughness, vitality, 
class mechanic. The secondary attributes like condition duration, critical damage, healing power, boon duration, and condition damage. Depending on the class, they will shuffle or move around. Like if I got on a Necromancer, power and boon duration would be the same. In most classes, boon duration, I mean condition duration, is stacked with power. And I'll touch a, on a little bit of why, why that is. But for say a Necromancer's precision is going to be coupled with his condition damage on the second tree and its toughness is going to be con coupled with boon duration on its third tree so different classes is different classes secondary stat attribute is not always linked to the same one as say another class so let's let's go over how or some of the ways you can go about making a simple build at max level or making a build that you want to try out or blueprint for your max level character because as soon as you make a character and get out of the tutorial you can go to pvp and have access to all your skills and abilities and trait points in a controlled environment that is called structured pvp or the mist so let's go about making a simple um, uh, maybe you're you picked a thief because you like to try to go into a uh, ninja style kind of kind of play style. You like to you know backstab people and retreat to the shadows and be invisible and stuff like that. Well, you already know you have a a uh, tree that says shadow arch, so you can pretty much assume that most of the traits that are going to have to do with stealth. Or in Shadow Arch because it's the thief's main defensive attribute, and we pre we are pretty sure we can we can make that assumption because Shadow Arch governs toughness, which is how tough your character is. So say we want to, you know, be a ninja in Guild Wars 2. We want to be a Guild Wars 2 ninja. So we look into this particular branch and we see that. Master Deception or Deception skills have 20% faster recharge. And what are Deception skills? Okay, you know, Shadow Rush is a Deception. Shadow Steps a Deception. Blinding Power is a Deception. So, just by looking at these skills, uh, Shadow Refuge creates a Pulsing Refuge at target area location, heals allies, and cloaks them in stealth. So we see this is a skill that stealth does. And blinding power blind flows in target area and grants stealth to nearby allies. So that's another skill that grants stealth. Uh, shadow return. Shadow step to target area become a shadow return, which returns you to your starting area and curse the shadows. So we can kind of get a general idea that these particular skills grant you know mobility and stealth. And being a ninja, being mobile and stealth is kind of important. So we can see that that's why Master Deception is there. To increase your survivability, aka toughness. Now you have skills that, you know, uh, Slow Pulse gain 10 seconds of regeneration if you have 5 or more stacks of bleeding. So kind of something to keep you healthy and stay tough. When you stealth it now, they gain regeneration for five seconds. Something else, you know, to be tough. So as you can see, it has a lot of things to do with, you know, keeping your character either uh, tough, healthy, or at a damage way. And if you look at your minor traits, it's also another good way to see what exactly that particular branch has to do with. So we have Last Refuge, use Blinding Power. So this trait will act just like this skill. Still lasts one second longer with meld with shadows. And hidden assassin game might be 15 seconds when you go into self. See as I said that the 25 in every branch will have something to do with increasing your damage no matter how you want to play. So there's that example right there. 
So this has a lot to do with stealth and ninja stealth, so let's, you know, deal with some of that. And I guess we want to be kind of tanky. So we want to be a ninja, but we don't want to be like a, a paper ninja. We want to kind of be like a tough ninja. So we'll take Saddles Rejuvenation. Regenerate health well in stealth. Also something else I want to point out before I get too far into this is that even though they are tired, like say you want several adapt traits but you only have one adapt box, you can put the adapt traits in the master and grandmaster box if you so choose. They're not just tied to this box. The same thing goes with master to grandmaster. The only limitation is you can't go like grandmaster to adapt. They can't go down. You can put the ones in the lower boxes and the higher boxes, but you can't put the ones in the higher boxes to the lower boxes. That's just something I want to get out the way. But let's see. Deception. We'll go with. Well, if you think about ninjas, they use, you know, like, smoke powder and stuff like that when they vanish or whatever. And that kind of, like, in, like, the TV shows or, like, the movies, it blinds their enemies. So we have a skill that says cloaked in shadow. And it says going stealth or invisible blinds folks because they're like, that sounds kind of ninja to me, right? And looking at your other traits, uh... Gain two initiative when using a skill that still you. And for the thief, something just to point out there, it, the class mechanic is that its weapon skills run on a point system. Kind of like, you know, a, uh, I'm not sure, another game that used the same kind of strategy. But the thief weapon skills run on a point system, so each skill class a set amount of points this allows the thief to use like skills the same skill in rapid succession provided they have enough points for it so when you go stealth you get back uh, resources for your class mechanic because that is the thief's class mechanic okay so we kind of got the, the, the shadow part of it but we want to be able to know like kill people really 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 fast so usually killing people with fast, you know, revolves around critical strikes. So we, we got the ninja aspect of it with the shadow. Now we need the killing or the killer aspect of it. So we'll go into critical strikes or power. Critical strikes increase the precision. So we know double damage is usually a faster way to kill somebody if you apply double the damage all at once. So we'll go, you know, 30 into that. And you have... For the first 10, you have Fear of Retaliation, Fury, when target reaches 50%. And Fury is another boon that gives you a fat, flat 20% critical uh, chance. Um, we'll go with Furious Retaliation. Since, you know, we want to be a ninja and we want to kill things as fast as possible. Well, actually, no. We'll go with side striking. 7% critical chance. Critical hit. When hitting a foe from the back or behind. And ninjas usually hit foes from the back or behind, so that's kind of I iconic. Uh, 15 gives you uh, critical hits for 20%. Restore one initiative. One second cooldown. It's not bad. It's good freebie. Uh, initial skills. We'll go with critical haste. 10% chance to gain uh, quickness on critical hit. We know we're going to apply critical hit a lot because we're increasing that attribute. So, uh, quickness is another, it's not a boon, but it's another uh, effect you can get that increases your. Uh, 
your movement, your skills, basically increases any action you can perform twice as fast. Executioner, Hidden Killer, Grandmaster Traits because they're 11 and 12. And since we're a ninja, we will probably go with Hidden Killer because it sounds more ninja-like and it grants a 100% chance of critical, yeah, critical hit chance at 100% while in stealth. Ninjas attack from the shadows, so when we attack, we're gonna get automatically a critical hit, a critical hit. All right, so we spent 60 of our 70 points, and we have 10 left over. And we can look at our other trees and see, we got 10 points. So let's see what else we got. We'll look into the power tree first, see if we find anything kind of ninja-ish. Shuddering Strike, 40% chance to call vulnerability on critical hits. Vulnerability in the game with Guild Wars 2 is a condition that uh, is applied to a target that increases the damage, the incoming damage to a target by 1% per stack and it stacks in, in intensity. So the more stacks you have, the more percent of damage uh, you can inflict or be or be inflicted upon you. So since we're a ninja, you know, we want to do as most damage as you can in a short amount of time. So we can go ahead and pick Shadow and Strikes just to form that kind of ionic picture. So we kind of have our trait points set out the way we want them. We want to try to go ninja and we try to pick skills that sounded ninja-ish to us. And I think we did pretty good overall. Um, but say we went down the line and, you know, something wasn't going into place in a fire or so forth, like say, we really, 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 really didn't get behind them too much to get that 7% critical hit from the behind or the side, and we know we're going to get like 100% critical hit chance when we uh, hit them out of stealth. So maybe we need to, we wanted more HP maybe. Maybe we wanted a little more HP for a top fight. We could tr take practice tolerance, which will change that and give us 5% of precision is converted into vitality. So 5% of this stat is given to this stat, which raises your overall health. That's just some of the ways that the Guild Wars 2 trait system is flexible and it encourages you to use traits that fit the current situation and that's just one way to do that so we have a build now we we've gone through the different stats and traits for the thief everybody has their own unique set of uh, traits and abilities now i want to look at where most stats come from and most stats come from your armor or your gear and this is SPVP so the gear is a little bit different here than in PvE but just for like example or a uh, report purposes you'll have Karns type gear which will always affect condition damage, vitality and power Rabbids gear will always boost precision, toughness, condition damage. Cleric's gear will always have power, toughness, but the main emphasis is healing power. Kind of why they call it clerics, because clerics are kind of like healers. And Rabbit and Cheerion will always have a main emphasis on condition damage, just with either power or vitality or precision and toughness. And as you can kinda kinda see that behind the main stat is always a offensive stat and a defensive stat. So you got power, vitality, offensive, defensive, main, offensive, defensive, main. Valkyrie has did the same trend, it's a little bit different. It will have uh, power, toughness, Critical damage, healing power, and PV, 
P and PVE Valkyrie's armor only governs power, critical damage, and vitality. It won't have healing power or toughness. Berserker's gear governs power, precision, vitality, critical damage, and PVP because this is the PVP version of it, and PVE it will only govern power, precision, and critical damage. So it's kind of like your your glass cannon type of uh, stat mixture. And you have soldiers, which governs power, toughness, vitality. And power, toughness, vitality it has an emphasis on power, your offensive stat, with two uh, lesser degree emphasis on defense, which is toughness and vitality. It's also a good uh, stat blend to have to have a uh, general overall performance in both uh, tanking, tanking damage and dealing damage. This power, as I said, is the best way or the fastest way to improve one's personal damage and toughness increases your chance to withstand physical direct damage and vitality helps you withstand uh, damage over time or dot damage. So this is a pretty balanced uh, stat spread you could have and it's called soldiers rampagers governs and PvP power precision vitality condition damage and PvE it will only govern power precision and condition damage with an emphasis on power so this is a a mostly a mostly an offensive uh, stat blend and another stat blend that's kind of uh, popular in hybrid builds like power condition builds that rely on a lot of critical strike like say the, the necromancer hybrid is another good example of that and it's a really good hybrid uh, knights and pvp governs power precision vitality and pve knights governs power precision and toughness shamans is a kind of a uh, a rare blend to find but it governs toughness healing power condition damage and there's a few other stat spreads in the game that I'll try to pull up later on the Wikiki or actually I'll just go ahead and try to pull that up now on the Guild Wars 2 Wikiki If I can find it. Magi's here is one that you'll <clears throat> see see a little bit of but Magi is a armor combination that governs healing power precision and vitality and has an emphasis on healing power similar to clerics um, another one is Apocrisy which has emphasis on power and a lower emphasis on toughness and condition damage. Explorer, which is kind of like you know your treasure, treasure hunting gear or whatnot, and other games your looting gear, which governs magic find, 
which is not a primary attribute. The only thing magic does is it increases your chance for to get drops from from mobs, oh, monsters traveler, in the world. Traveler. Travelers, the same thing as explorer, but instead of precision, it governs magic find power and condition damage. Wayfarers governs magic find toughness and vitality. Any other ones I didn't hit on? Uh, caverns governs toughness, power, critical damage. So it's kind of like your your big hitter with power and critical damage and toughness. And then you have giver's armor, which governs toughness, boon duration, healing power. As you see, like I said, knights right here. It's toughness, power, precision. And that is most of the all the triple attribute gear spreads you could you could find, which would be here. Oh, right, back to our ninja char idea we were trying to develop for an art example build. Um, as a ninja, you would probably use like you know dagger dagger. Because it has an emphasis of the on wild, 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 and emphasis on trying to kill. So that would probably be your weapon set and whatnot. And in PvP or whatever, just for emphasis, we're gonna run the berserker build. So we got our build picked out. We just wanna go see what it can do. Just want to see what our ninja char can do really fast. Kind of like stealth with the uh, some of the things we picked out. And since we're a ninja, just pretend like this was like some random blood. You see, he got blind from the, the pulse of Shadow Refuge, so he got blind every time. We can just stealth and run out. So that was a horrible ninja right there. That was terrible. We run up and Backstab and we know we're gonna crit. We know we're gonna crit every time we attack out of stealth because of our traits or our mix of traits that we put so we know every time we hit out of stealth it's gonna be a critical hit and we know when we critical hit we're gonna possibly have a 10% chance to get toughness and we know that we have a chance to apply you know, vulnerability and so forth. We also know when we go stealthy blind, we get uh, back to our class mechanic resource to use our skills when we stealth, and stealthing uh, regenerates HP. So yeah, that's just a, an example of how you can define your character with the mixture of traits and stats. Stat spreads. aspects so, so a few points I want to hit on before we wrap this up is that the Guild Wars 2's trait system is a, a very flexible system that they implemented it allows you to define your character between by its traits that you pick out also traits are interchangeable just because you have 30 points in a uh, particular branch and you pick your three traits you like it doesn't mean that you can't change them out at any time when you're not in battle and it also means that it allows you to adapt to situations better which was another um, advertising idea that was used for Gilbert's 2 they wanted you to be able to play the way you wanted to play without feeling too restricted on any class so if I wanted to make a character that you know was support I should be able to do that on any on any class I want to, and the traits help you do that. So thank you very much. This is Dark Zero. As you know me, this is my Guild Wars 2 build basics with the trait system and the stats of Guild Wars 2. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video, and I hope you got something out of it. If you liked it, subscribe. If you if you have any questions or comments or things you would like to see in upcoming videos, pitch me a message. Thank you very much and have a good one.